shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to part 19 of the ASICS Intruder build. Now, I've already ingested all the footage for this, and as I was going and compiling everything, I realized that for some reason I forgot to record an intro. It just starts with me doing shit. So, to lay a bit of the groundwork, this is about weathering the underside and a bit of the upper surfaces of the Intruder, and a couple other things like installing landing gear and whatnot. And it starts out with using ammo panel line washes, which I've had great results with in the past, but I don't know if these bottles are going bad or what the deal is, but they just didn't do great. So if you see a lot of quick cuts of me putting this shit down, it's basically just kind of blast through it and get to other stuff. So keep watching, I uh, hope you enjoy it, and here we go. Okay, so now that I've got some of this down, I'm going to go ahead and remove it. Basically use a paper towel or a Q-tip. The cool thing about the panel line wash is it just literally wipes away. Now, because the surface has been flatted in some areas, it will be trickier to remove, but that's not a big deal because we're going to come over with oils. So any weird sort of like lasting shit will be worked in in various ways. So oils plus thinner will make this stuff go places. Okay, so we've got a couple sections here where the panel line wash just decided it didn't want to go anywhere. So we're going to tell it tough shit. And you can do that with a little bit of odorless mineral spirits. So next, I'd really like to get the gear struts installed, and in order to prep for that, we need to get the gear bays appropriately dirty so we're not trying to do reach arounds once we get in there. And for that, I'm going to be using ABT 502 sepia and starship filth, and some matte effects thinner. So basically, let's see here, let's start with a little bit of starship filth. I have to keep telling myself that a lot of this shit just will go invisible very quickly once the gear bays and doors go in. Not to stress about it too much. Now that we've got this good distribution going on, I'm going to bring in the Deerfoot Stippler. 
kind of grunge it up. And I don't want it quite that filthy. So. So there we've got a nice dirty looking part of the gear bay. Let that set up for a few minutes and come back to it. Okay, so I think the main gear bays are in a pretty decent place. Dirtied up and as you can see as the oils kind of dry they, they lose a bit of their intensity which is awesome because we get that sort of nice subtle scuzziness going on. Now, before I glue the gear struts in I want to handle this area right in here because there's a lot going on and I don't want to be trying to you know, reach around the gear strut to get to, to get to the stuff. So for that, I'm going to need a few new oils. So what else is coming out to play? Well, first of all, we've got some good old black. Second, we've got some ABT 502 light gray. Third, we've got their faded white. We've also got cream brown and neutral gray. So quite the palette to play with. Now just real quickly to give a sense of what we're working with. This is the palette. So you can see like the light gray is really much more of a blue. Neutral gray is much more of a brown. There's the faded white. There's black. There's the cream brown. So we got kind of a, a mix of stuff going on here. Now, what's going on in this section of an intruder? Well, on some of the reference photos I've got, you can get a good glimpse of the underside here. And from what I believe are drain holes Kind of right here for shit to fall out of the engine because there's holes and there's nothing to fill them with in the kit uh <laughs> maybe uh maybe it's inaccurate but at the same time the reference photos do seem to show sort of like fluids and stuff kind of coming out of here and sort of scuffing up the whole area back here then there's a darker streak area kind of like on either side of the pylon right here this is more of like a gray, tan, brown sort of thing, and it gets a little bit lighter as it goes out. And then there's just general weathering over by the gear base. So, got quite a couple things to do, and uh, my preferred approach to this kind of thing is to start light and then build dark on top of it so that we can get a good amount of contrast going. So, keeping that in mind, I think I'm going to start by adding white sort of right over here above the gear base, right? So, do 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 Placement does not matter because it just does not. All this stuff will get incredibly worked in. probably looks like I'm just getting rid of it all on the camera, but there's some very subtle variations taking place here. Big ass deer foot stippler time. Now I'm going to start building up this sort of streaking kind of stuff happening up here. It's kind of a shame because most of this won't even be seen. Basically, what I'm trying to do here is blend it in but not blended in so much that it vanishes. Okay, now we're going to start working some more tones into this sort of tan shit that's happening here.
one thing I like about using a larger brush for this is it keeps it from getting too streaky. It kind of forces a more diffuse pattern on you. Now we're going to start working in the neutral gray. This is going to form the first sort of spine of the shit coming out of these holes. As you get further back here, it might even. take it over and get some naps out in a few minutes. It's the one thing about doing oils this way is the brushes gum up and kind of lose their efficiency. Pretty decent streakage going on there. Start building in the crud on the underside by the pylon. Starship filth is great on gray schemes for just this kind of bleh gets everywhere. Okay, so it's getting pretty late here, but I've got a good start on the tan areas for the leak, spill, whatever the shit's coming out of these holes. And I've also been building in this uh, darker, darker band sort of between the two engine humps around the center pylon. I'm not sure what causes it to get darker other than just smuts. Um, you know, maybe it's shit kicking out of the, out of the nose gear bay. Maybe it's stuff, uh, you know, running out the bottom of the intake splitter plate or, you know, splitters down here and who knows. Um, but whatever it is, I'm making it dirty. So, again, this is cream brown, or sorry, faded white, cream brown, neutral gray, and a bit of starship filth going in here. When we pick back up, it's going to be all about getting sort of the center stripe of this and making it differentiated from the lighter stuff kind of fading out and having some fun with it. Okay, now we're going to start adding a bit of darkness to the center of these streaks.
Okay, so we're pretty good on the streaking and whatnot up here. Now we need to move into this area and this area and basically get them sorted so we can install the landing here. So the way I'm going to approach these, basically very haphazard, keep me from getting in some sort of like pattern fixation mode and fucking everything up that way. That involves thin mixes, thinner, and just scattering shit around. We'll come back and we'll add a little bit more right here along the gear doors once this all gets blended in. That's the thing about this kit and this subject is the entire thing is filthy. But it's not like covered in mud, it's just filthy. It's worn and broken in. It's been touched up, it's got a flat surface, a pretty flat surface. It leaks, shit just kind of sticks into it. Get over here. Now we're gonna go a little bit crazy. We're gonna get some naphtha. Uh, the stippler is getting very, very light pressure here. Nothing intense at all. Just basically tapping. Sweep some fucking hair off of it. It's the one pain in the ass about these stipplers is sometimes they shed little bristles and other shit that they kind of pick up through their life. So you got to be careful of that. Move some shit. Just less of it overall. As you can see over here, you can see how much that dials back as it kind of sets, right? That's looking pretty decent. Okay, so it is time to install some landing gear struts. For this, I'm mixing up some 15 minute epoxy put it together in a little cup, stir, stir, stir. I'm going to not put it over the model while I stir, because that seems like it's inviting bad karma. Okay. We're going to do this side first. And honestly, I could probably install these without glue. But I really don't want to worry about it. No matter what, they really do not need much. All right, then we're going to stomp that guy in. Boom, there you go. 
one installed gear strut. Let's go to the other side. Look at that, click clack. Okay, now for the nose strut. Now the nose strut connects in two main places, right up here at the front, you can see that little square hole, and then back here there's like a little trough that holds the rear support arm. And I've been having really good results getting the front arm to sit just fine. The back arm has been a challenge. This one also has the added fun of a little bit floppier. I apologize if my head gets in the way while I'm doing this. Come on, no shaking. Okay, we've got those guys mounted up. And we've got an intruder on its legs. Okay, so I'm gonna let this sit overnight and really cure up, and then we will come back and do more weathering. Okay, so I've jumped ahead just a little bit because honestly, this is one rather large kit and it has taken me several bench sessions just to get to the point where I'm almost done with the underside. So you'll forgive me if uh, I didn't record multiple hours of video of me doing the same repetitive task over and over and over again on the underside. But I want to stop real fast and kind of take stock of what I've been doing and how I've been doing it. So the keys for this are oils, which we've gone through, and honestly, a little un, uh, unsung MVP, which I'm going to put the cap on it so I don't spill it all over the place, which is Guns Mr. Weathering Color, particularly this multi-gray tone, which, as you can see, is really just a gray, not multi-gray. Weird naming conventions. Anyway, the thing about it is it goes on really thin, and then you can hit it with various thinners to make it do different things. So, like, the wing over here and the treatment on most of the control surfaces is based on the multi-gray with some oils on top. As you can see, they're looking nice and dirty. We've got some Starship filth in here, basically representing shit coming off of the hinges and actuators and all that. And just kind of where airflow sort of butts into it as it's moving and things accumulate. Now, in addition to the oils and the Mr. Weathering color, there are two other variables that really impact how things go down when you're dealing with oils or oil-like substances. These are, I believe, enamels. And that is brushes and the types of thinner that you're using. And so, basically, I've been using two different types to get some different effects out of things. First of these, even though it says IPA on the bottle, this is basically naphtha. Actually, it is naphtha. It came out of a big old can of it. And naphtha has a very, very fast evaporation rate and dries nice and quickly. And for that reason, I tend to prefer it for cleaning brushes because if a brush gets kind of caked up with oils and stops performing the way you want it to, that's a problem. And if you clean it off in mineral spirits, you are waiting forever for that shit to get out of it. And that means that brush is basically out of commission, at least for that bench session, if not two or three afterwards. But because it evaporates so fast, it can also do some really cool things on the surface. And that's how you get the sort of nice kind of grungy patterns in here is I'm just hitting that with the naphtha and then coming through with a brush like this and just sort of basically stabbing it into place. The 
other thinner that I've been using is this ABT 502 Matte Effect Thinner, which is basically odorless mineral spirits. Um, I believe it ha might have some sort of like Japan dryer or something in it to make it go flat, but honestly, it feels just like regular mineral spirits to me, so who knows, it might just be the same shit that's in, you know, regular ABT 502 Thinner, just with a different label. Whatever, I needed a new thinner, and it was there. But this stuff goes on wetter and stays wetter longer, so it's more workable. So if you want to really kind of get a gentle blend of crud in and use something like a Deerfoot Stippler, this stuff is your ticket. So I've been doing a lot of work on the underside, as you can see. I've got the centerline tank installed now. I've got kind of the center areas wrapped up, more or less. I've got the landing gear installed. I've got the gear doors installed. I've got both of the wings pretty much where I want them. I still need to kind of look at the inside pylons. I think this one's good. This one might need some work. I might say fuck it. As we bring it around here, I've got the arrestor hook installed. Back there, and that bay is all nice and dirty and everything. As you would expect. Let's see if I can... I can't get far enough up to show you all, but the uh, little FLIR turret ball has been installed as well. And then as we swing this around this side, you can see the other thing I've been working on is building up basically the exhaust coming off of the engines produces a, on a lot of intruders, produces like this sort of tan-ish stain. And on some of them this is super pronounced and literally goes all the way you know, it's like from here back, the entire bottom side is covered in this all the way to the rudder. Uh, I'm not going to go quite that heavy just because I feel that's a little bit absurd. So I'm basically trying to bring it back, you know, basically past the National Insignia and then have it kind of fade out and then pick up a little bit sort of back here. I've also gone ahead and tackled this stabilizer, but not this one. So we're getting there. Um, it's just, it's a big ass kit to deal with all this stuff on so yeah anyway let's swing it around and play with a few oils okay, so first I'm gonna play back here and I'm gonna finagle the camera around so you get a good view of what's happening here so let's start with a little bit of multi-gray this stuff's great for building up a good sort of dirty base so there's nothing fancy about the application of this the only thing you have to watch out for is any little hairs that or lint that has attracted itself to this thing in the process of living out in the garage. Uh, I've tried to dust it and brush it off as best I can, but holy shit, this stuff finds everything. So that's a decent starting point. I'm going to grab a bit of naphtha have a little bit off of in the paper towel and then just get in here and start breaking this up and kind of working it around the whole surface. This is one where moving the angle of the brush really helps because otherwise it looks like you get a bunch of little stab lines and that's no good for business. And this stuff does fade and lose its uh, opacity as it, come on, come on, as it dries out, so there's no need to think, oh shit, it's too much, you're pretty much guaranteed a nice sort of translucency and general grime as it does its thing. And once we get that general grime in place, after that we can come in and we can start adding more shit to it. This is a starting point. Now, I wouldn't do this on every single aircraft, but on something that's TPS gray, which is already kind of flat and prone to staining and shit anyway, getting this sort of tide marky cruddiness is actually sort of in keeping with the actual That's a decent looking little amount of crud there. Now let's add some 
starship filth along the actuator line here because this whole thing would move. So basically just dab that in there. Come here with a dry brush. Stab, 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 stab. This is definitely one of those where I prefer working with the oils dry. Getting that little effect going there. A little bit of shit around it. Okay, so we got a little bit of dirt going on there. We need to build sort of the scuzz along this area because this is where it's landing and slamming onto the deck. Kicking up shit from the arrestor hook and all that, right? So this is an area. Where we're going to want to have that wetness of the matte effects thinner. So I'm going to put this on the small brush first. Just kind of use it to get shit going. And yes, this is hard as shit on the brushes. That is the one downside. I have yet to find a method for oil weathering that is not abusive on the bristled kind. Now, one of the reasons to use this brush versus, say, the Deerfoot Stippler here is the Deerfoot Stippler is great. But it also leaves somewhat of a uniform pattern, which we want to be careful of here. This uniform pattern can look too uniform. Again, this is just for a general grime approach. This is not for highlighting panel lines, doing streaking, fluid leaks. This is just shit on an airframe, basically. Astute observers might notice that this is where the exhaust line is also going to cut across, so we need to sort of prepare for that. Then we're going to do a little bit where it's a little bit squirrely. We're going to I hate it when that thing sheds a fucking bristle. Okay, so that's nice and dirtied up now. And that's kind of the difference between using naphtha down here and using the matte effects thinner up here. Okay, now let's go ahead and get working on the exhaust effect on this side. This side's tricky because I've got shit getting in the way of my hand. Now I'm kind of carrying it up a little bit. Taking some of the streakiness out of it. Point where the brush is a little bit loaded up, so we're gonna switch brushes and back this off. And there. Cool, I think the underside is looking pretty good at this point. Okay, so I've about got the underside where I want it. And at this point, I need to flip this over so I can put the wheels on it. So I can start the rest of the weathering process up top because the way that the stand works, it's basically got a front and a rear little place to sit. And it's got places on the wings. 
and the places on the wings are currently outside of the um, outside of the wing brake here, and I really don't want them resting on that, even though it's got carbon fiber in it. Just that extra amount of flex will be a pain in the ass to deal with. Um, however, the front and rear spacers are difficult because, well, the rear's fine. The front, though, up here we've got the fuel tank, which I probably shouldn't have installed yet, <coughs> and then the clear navigation lights, and then we've got the gear doors. So there's really nowhere for it to go up here. So because of that, I am going to put this thing on its wheels, uh, let it sit for a little bit, and then come back and deal with the upper surfaces. So I think all that super oppressive late summer heat with temperatures up into the mid 90s at 11 o'clock at night and high humidity, uh, the stuff that basically just made being out here in the garage a huge pain in the ass, I think they may finally be over. Last night we got a pretty kick-ass cold front that took the temperatures from you know the, the mid 90s all the way down into the upper 50s last night and actually got a little bit chilly. And so that strange sound you're hearing around me is actually silence. It's the absence of the air conditioner uh, struggling away. So thank God, finally. And with that, I can finally also turn my attention to the upper surface of the intruder. Now, the lower surface is in a pretty good place. I think I may still go back and refine a few things, but overall, I'm pretty happy with where it's at. With the upper surface, though, I think I'm going to take a different approach. So when I was doing the underside, Basically, it was all oils all over the place, right? With this one, one thing I was noticing on the underside was that panel line work and things like that would go away when I started messing with stuff on top of it, when I started using naphtha on top of it or good old mineral spirits. It would basically just take whatever I'd put into a panel line and just lift it right out. And so this time I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to do all the panel line shit first. And then I'm going to come back on top of that, put down a layer of clear to protect it, probably like a, I don't know, maybe a semi-mat, maybe just straight up dead flat coat. Then the oils will come in. So that's the plan. And when I do that, I may also flip it back around and flat out the underside just to make sure that everything is golden there. And maybe honestly pump up the uh, contrast a little bit on the weathering that's going on down there because it looks awesome when it's flipped over, but when you turn it up, you know, turn it right side up, put it on its wheels, and you look under it, it just all vanishes. Um, that's the the curse of underside weathering in my experience. Um, you know, when I really went to town, even with the Corsair last year, and took it way overboard and really pumped up the contrast, the second you flip it over, all gone. So... I need to decide in my own head if it's worth the effort on this or not to try that. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So, let's do some shit with oils. Now, for this and the panel lining, um, I've been pretty disillusioned with the ammo panel line washes lately. I don't know if they're going bad on me. I know that that's a thing that they do. Um, but they've just been kind of gritty and they've been pulling out of shit. And they're not... F capillary stuff's all gone. And I'm not really interested in a sludge wash right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use three different oils here to have my fun. First we got black. Black's probably overkill, but it's out here to help us make things a bit darker as we need. Next up we've got a bit of Payne's Gray. That stuff's kind of spoogy. Gross. And we're going to bring in a little bit of faded white. So we need to get a lighter gray out of it and all that kind of shit, right? Then I'm a big fan of this VMS Universal Weathering Carrier, um, which I'm honestly not sure what is in it, but some kind of mineral spirity naphtha y thing. But it seems to really do a bang up job with capillary action. So. That is exactly what I want it for. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're just going to start getting to different lines.
Okay, so you get the idea of what's going on. I'm going to finish doing these, and we're going to pick up and clean all this shit off, and then we'll be ready to flat coat. Okay, so panel lines have been washed. We've had some time to set up. Now it is time to remove the excess, and the way to do this, fuckload of Q-tips. So for some of these, it really depends on the surface. And this is kind of a variable surface, because parts of it got that uh, ammo one-shot clear Steinol res shit. Uh, clear Steinol rest treatment, and others did not. And so you can really tell the difference where some shit just comes right off. Other shit is a little bit more stubborn. Uh, this exercise also told me I need to get a better black than the Winton grade Windsor and Newton. It's, it's, I don't know, it's not... Um, it's not as good in these washes as the ABT or as my Payne's Gray. But anyway, a lot of this stuff just kind of sweeps off, right? Just like that. And if there's a little bit left over, I don't care that much because we're going to be hitting a lot of oils on the uh, top side of this thing, so whatever. Let's zoom in so you can see it a little bit more clearly. As you can see, because the surface is relatively flat in certain areas, um, I didn't get a lot of capillary action where I wanted to. In other areas I did. This is an area where a th little bit of thinner to really wipe it off is a good call. It'll stay in those rivets, but you can wipe it nicely off of the rest of the surface. Just if you're dealing with panel lines, I've generally found it's a good idea to go perpendicular to them. You run less risk of the Q-tip kind of finding its way in and fucking up all the work you've done and just removing everything. Ain't nobody got time for that. Right here, I'm rubbing underneath it to get rid of the, uh, the scuzz from sweeping stuff away, basically. Leaving a little bit of definition there. Don't want, don't want it too stark, but again, oils on top are going to blend a lot of this way more than I'm probably intending, so that's why I intentionally went a little bit more stark than I would go if I was just doing panel lines. And nothing else. And I cannot stress this enough. Well, I can't stress two things enough. First of all, fuck load of Q-tips, because once they get dirtied, they lose some of their effectiveness. Second thing is, this is going to be a very dirty aircraft when all is said and done. And so, perfection is not the goal here. I'm intentionally saving that black shit for last. Takes a little bit more oomph. Again, you can see the Payne's Gray. Starship filth and faded white. That's kind of like the... I was sort of mixing and matching those as I went through doing this to sort of get a couple different grays from cooler grays to warmer grays to darker to lighter, etc. Nothing is more boring than the entire aircraft having the exact same fucking panel line wash. But those come off super easy, right? Then when we come to do the black, notice that it's kind of smeary still, right? It doesn't just remove the way that uh, we necessarily want it to. Good thing is we can translate some of this into leaks and staining and all that sort of fun stuff, right? Some of it, like right up here, that's just not going to play. So let's get our dampened Q-tip in here.
trick is to do this without removing the black. So like I said, a fuckload of Q-tips. I actually ended up with one left over. But anyway, here is the intruder with all the panel lines did. Everything is looking pretty awesome. This is really, honestly, I don't know how well it's showing up in the camera, but these faint panel line accents and some of the dirt kicking off of them is really starting to breathe some life into this that wasn't quite there before. Okay, so why the fuck are we back to the underside? Well, because we're going to spray it with some MRP Flat Clear. It's because there are a few areas that didn't seem as flat as I wanted them to be. So we're going to help them along. nice and knocked back. Give that a second and we're going to flip it over. Okay, on to the top side. Thankfully up here we don't have any clear parts we've got to watch out for, except maybe the turret ball around the nose. I'm going to go ahead and knock that area out first. Now this MRP flat clear does really well when it just kind of gets slightly misted on. Okay, so we have got the intruder cleared up and pretty much ready for oils across the surface. So I think this is a pretty good spot to make a break, end the episode, and come back with the next installment focused on all of the fun topside main surface oil work. So. Thanks for watching. Uh, we are definitely in the home stretch of this build. Stay tuned for more, and uh, hopefully, before too much longer, we'll get this sucker wrapped up off the bench and move on to other adventures. Catch you later. <laughs>